What's up, mga mating bay? So, previously, we are done with the singly reinforced beam. All of our examples were actually singly reinforced. So, maybe this time, it's a new topic, okay? So, we will be dealing with the doubly reinforced, meaning both compression and the tension portion of the beam consists of a rebar. So, how are we going to solve for its flexure? So, you just continue watching this video. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, and share the video, okay? So, our example here is this one. Compute the bending stresses in the beam shown. So, that is, obviously, the shown is already given. So, that is our figure. Considering that, it, that our N is equal to 10 and M is equal to 118 feet kips. Okay. So, the transformed area for a doubly reinforced beam looks like this. Okay. So before, what we only have is this square here, that is the concrete, the area of the concrete for the compression side, okay, that is what we only have if it's singly, and for the rebar, okay, so that is what we only have when it is singly. But if it's doubly, we already have both for the compression side, we will draw another line that represents our rebar in our compression side. So we know that in our tension portion, we have NAS, all right? So for the compression, what are we going to use is 2N minus 1 AS prime. When we say AS prime, when you see prime over there, that simply means that that is for the compression, okay? So that is for the compression, the steel for the compression, okay? So for tension, we just AS. As for the compression, we have A prime S, okay? So this steel here for the compression is 2N minus 1 multiplied by a prime s so that is the area for the compression multiplied by 2n minus 1 whereas here on the tension we just multiply n multiplied by a s okay so that is how we make the transformed area for our doubly reinforced beam i hope that is clear in solving that in solving this stress it's the same, it's just the same with the singly. It's just that there's a rebar at the top, okay? So we have to locate our neutral axis. And of course, we always assume that our neutral axis is somewhere in the middle. So, and we also assume that the distance from the top to our neutral axis is our x. So that is how we get that. So 14, that 14 is the base times the height of x so this is our x and then from the middle down to our neutral axis that is x over 2 okay so that is well for uh, our area times our distance so plus again the rebar here that is 2n minus 1 okay 2n minus 1 a prime s so the 2n minus 1 a prime s there is 20 minus 1 okay so the 20 is 2n and then minus 1 and then our a prime s here is 2 inches squared so that is the area here if you can see if you can see so that portion here this that is our a prime so two inches squared and the distance of that to the neutral axis if this distance is two and a half then meaning that this x minus two and a half that is the distance to the neutral axis so again the this is the area 2n minus 1 as and then the distance to the neutral axis is x minus two and a half that is equals for this so this is for the compression side and for our tension side we just have um 10 that is our n this is our n okay 
and so this is also our area okay nas and then the distance to our neutral axis this one that is 17 minus x okay so i hope that is clear so that is how we solve for that and then simplifying that equation we can get that the value of x is just 6.45 okay so that is how we locate our neutral axis okay okay next step is we have to solve for the moment of inertia okay so in solving the moment of inertia as i have said on my previous videos that i just use one third base times height cube that is applicable only for the rectangle or the square but if it's not the area is not a rectangle then you cannot use that formula when we are solving actually the inertia we're using the summation of inertia plus ad squared but if i see that the area of the compression side for the concrete is just a rectangle i just use one third base times height cube that is also already a simplified formula that is a shortcut it's not wrong but you know if your teacher wanted you to sh to show their the complete process then you just maybe you should watch my previous videos of how i get that solving that problem so we have one third base the base is this one and our height our x is 6.45 so that is the inertia of our compression for the concrete and then always for the steel we just have to to use area d squared and in solving the area we have to consider the 2n minus 1 for the compression and the n for the tension okay so 2n a prime s and n a s and then their distance to the neutral axis so for the compressions you have 20 because n is equals to 10 it is already given so n is equal to 10 so 20 minus 1 multiplied by the area of the compression which is 2 that is 2 okay that is, that is 2 and also its distance to the neutral axis is um, 6.45 minus 2 and a half that is 3.95 okay so that is how we get this portion so uh, time a d squared so we have to put a squared here and also plus for the tension we have n a s so n is 10 area is 4 and then its distance to the neutral axis is 17.5 minus 6.45 that is 11.05 squared so in Solving that, we can get that the inertia is 6,729 inches to the foot. So that is how we solve our inertia. And lastly, okay, in solving our bending stress, since we already locate our neutral axis, we already have our inertia, then we can solve for our stresses but in our stresses we already have three here first is for the compression for the concrete and then for the steel in the compression side and for the tension side okay so this is for the compression the concrete and then this is for the steel so th that this two is for the compression and this one is for the tension so we have to solve for the three if you are required to solve for the bending if you want to investigate a doubly reinforced beam so you have to investigate the stress of the concrete in the compression side and then the stress of the rebar in the compression side and then also the stress of the rebar in its tension side okay so in the only difference is we have to multiply 2n okay you oh, just have to familiarize or remember that put it in your mind you memorize that one that in solving the the stress in uh in the compression side if for the steel in the compression side we use 2n m y over i okay so we have to use that one so substituting that to the formula 
of course we I have shown the formula on our previous example so for F FC that is M Y over I alone so substituting that so we have 118 feet pounds it's already pounds so the given is 118 that is multiplied by 1000 to get the pounds and then we also multiplied it by 12 to get in inches to try to to become inches since we are using 6.45 inches and 6729 inches to the fourth and then this is our stress for our compression in our concrete side and also for our steel so we have two and this is n that is 10 and then we had just have to substitute again the formula the moment is 118 thousand feet pounds multiplied by 12 and then the y is its distance to the neutral axis that is 3.95 over the inertia which is six six thousand seven hundred and twenty nine so this will be our stress in our steel or our rebar in the compression side and of course for our tension side n that is just n my over i so so we get 23.253 okay so i hope you get that and you i hope you learned something today the only difference is we have to add in our transform area we have to add another line another part for the steel and we take that as 2n minus 1 a prime s prime is an indicator that it is in the compression side okay so 2n minus 1 that is for the compression side so i hope you learned something today and sh don't forget to subscribe and share my videos thank you so much goodbye